Hey there, I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Welcome back to week three of my 25 Crafts to Christmas countdown. And this week we're going way back to basics. Super, super simple. So this is going to be a really quick tutorial. Fast and easy. And we're using wooden craft sticks. I buy these at Dollar Tree. You can buy them at any craft store with the unfinished wood. And we're going to make cute little Christmas ornaments using just wood sticks, paint, and twine. Let's get making. Okay, so for this craft project, you need some very, very basic craft supplies. Like, all of this was in my craft stash. Wooden craft sticks, I get these at the Dollar Tree, but you can get them at, like, Hobby Lobby. Twine, also Dollar Tree. Um, an assortment of deco art paint. Use, like, you can use Apple Barrel, whatever you have. But I will link to the exact colors that I used in the video description below. But I just use um, deco art Americana, just so everything's, I don't know, consistent. Is that weird? So like when I look in my shelf, I like all the brands to be the same. Paint brushes, scissors, and then hot glue, and this handy gadget. So I used to um, use these Fiskars craft shears when I would cut my popsicle sticks, and now I've upgraded to love these craft shears. By the way, for like cardboard and stuff. Uh, now I've upgraded. I ordered this. I don't even know what it's called, like angle shears. I'll link to them. Uh, but they allow you to cut things at exact precise angles. And so for this project, that comes in really handy. I'll show you how to do it both ways if you just want to use heavy duty scissors, if you don't want to have like a fancy gadget. But let's get started. We are going to cut some popsicle sticks, craft sticks. So these are just the regular, they're not the jumbo, but they're like the large. They're bigger than like popsicle sticks that you would eat for a snack. So I have this set to like 60 degrees, 120 degrees. So you don't do 45, you wanna do 60. And just make your first cut. These will go flying. I will like be cleaning my craft room and I'll find like random pieces that have like flown into corners. So fair warning. So you wanna start by cutting a triangle. Okay, so that's the top of your Christmas tree. Cute little triangle. Then you have this other part. And so this is kind of wonky, so I'm gonna explain this to my, the best of my ability. I did this like test on a few before I really like nailed my method. I made like six of these this morning. So I will take, and I'll zoom in as close as I can, the outer corner, the bottom right corner, and then this top right corner, this top right corner is gonna be indented just a tiny little bit. And then you're gonna make another mark that's indented just a tiny little bit from that bottom left corner here, right? So you want the length of this top piece, this top line to be a little bit shorter than the bottom line of the piece above it. And then you place your craft stick back on the shears and you line up that little mark with this line in the middle here and snap. And then you have this next piece that nestles right underneath here. And then I'm gonna repeat that a couple more times. So I'm gonna make this little mark just a little bit indented. Line it up on this middle line and snap. Okay. Then I have to start with a new craft stick because this isn't enough to make um, my third piece. So I will just make one cut. Oh, yeah, that one's flying. My dog is sitting in a chair in the corner. She doesn't like loud noises. She's sitting in the chair in the corner of my craft room. Oh, yeah, she just jumped down. She's not happy with the sound of this craft project. So then you always put the cut part on the right side. You make your angle or your mark on the left side. And if you have this angle piece set at, you know, 120, 120 on the right, 60 on the left. All these cuts will work out. There we go. And then one final time. So you want to have five pieces. Okay. 
So you can squeeze out one ornament from two craft sticks. So I just used two craft sticks on this. And then you want to paint. So I did a bunch earlier today in like blues and greens and like this teal color. I'm really into green and white at Christmas time. I'm a neutral lover at heart, but you can do whatever you want. But this one I'm just going to do gray. Oh, and I didn't mention in my supply list, parchment paper if you want. So this is what I do when I am lazy, which is quite often. And I want to paint something that has the front and the back painted and I don't want to have to wait, especially on like little projects like this. It's like, I just want to paint it all at once. So what I do is I'll use my little paintbrush and I will, so you want to paint all these edges, front and back and like the side edges, you want it to be all nice. And then after I paint the front and back, I set it down on parchment paper to dry so it doesn't stick. Yes, the back won't look 100% perfect, but also no one's looking at the back of my ornament. So, but I do like, you know, on wreaths and door hangers and stuff, I do like to make the back look somewhat polished. It's just kind of like a, I don't know, a weird habit of mine. But so I will just paint the front, back, and all the sides and lay it on parchment to dry. All right, there we go. And the top part piece has already started to dry. So I'm just going to go right in and decorate my little ornaments. So I have like a variety of fine tip paint brushes and you can do like swooshes, lines, polka dots, circles, whatever. I'll show you a picture of like all of my finished ornaments at the end. Just, I don't know. I kind of want like, I went with like a little bit more of like modern patterns on these, but on this one, I'm just going to use my navy paint and polka dot. Okay, and then while these are drying, I'm gonna show you real quick how to make this if you don't wanna use these shears and you just wanna use heavy duty scissors. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just cut through. I think it's important to get like the angles correct. I don't like that angle. I'm gonna go a little wider on that first one and I'll show you why here in a second. So I have my top piece, right? It's not perfect, but this is an example. And then I would like line up my next piece. And I'm going to figure out like, where do I want to cut it? And I'm going to hold my scissors like kind of at that same angle and then make the cut just so that within reason, like all the angles of your triangle pieces line up. And then I'm gonna do another one, lay this flat, line my scissors up, and then so on and so forth. So like the end result looks pretty much the same. And unless you like are super detailed or nitpicky or you have like a crazy aunt who's like inspecting your Christmas tree and says, you know, the angles on your cuts aren't like 100%. I mean, it's gonna, the net result is gonna be the same. So that is that. And so now these are almost done drying. Good enough. So I'm gonna flip all of these over and we're gonna assemble our tree trunk. 
You're gonna take a length of twine, maybe 24 inches long, two feet long, fold it in half, create a loop at the top that's maybe two inches long, and then tie a simple knot. Loop it through and tie the knot. So then this is gonna serve as the hanger for your ornament so it can hang on a tree branch. And then all you're gonna do is hot glue this to the back of your tree. Start with the top piece, make a little line of hot glue. And use my little finger protector. I finally got smart about burning myself with hot glue. And you just press that down. And then you move on to the next one. And you run a line of hot glue down the middle. Press it down. And you want to leave a little gap between the pieces. And you want to try to make the gap uniform between all the pieces. But no judgments if it's not perfect. And I probably could have cut this shorter, but I always like to have long tail ends and have to throw away than risk not having enough for creating problems. And then you just trim like an inch and a half little tail, two inches, inch and a half, two inches tail. And that's the uh, tree trunk there. But there you go. So you can feel free to use, like I said, I'm going to link to all the paint colors that I use, but you can use any color. Um, any pattern, a design, whatever you want. And here are a few of my finished little Christmas tree ornaments. I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, happy making!